Welcome to Pat's Cast. I'm Brad Whitaker. I have an idea, okay? You know, we are what? Uh, it is of this recording February 13th, which means we still have two and a half months until the NFL draft. Um, so we're probably going to make dozens of variations of this video many, many times over. But I think I figured it out, what the New England Patriots should do, how they should bring us back to the promised land where we were once again and defeat Patrick Mahomes and their reign as the new NFL dynasty and get back to where we once were under Tom Brady for 20 seasons. And that involves using the number three pick on Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes. Drafting a wide receiver. I know, I know. You say in the NFL, you need to build from the inside out. You need to start with the quarterback, the offensive line, move out to the tight end, old school Patriots, maybe get a fullback. Then you can think about the receiver position, not to mention the defense. But the defense is going to be just fine, right? I mean, maybe you bring Kyle Duggar back. Probably don't bring Josh Uche back, but who knows? He wants to come back. But the defense is going to be okay. They have an elite roster on defense, at least for another season. So what you need to do is figure out how to fix that offense and fix it quickly because you can go from being a 4-13 and football team to a 8-9 and nine team pretty quickly, right? You know, I mean, th there are a lot of one-score games. Maybe you can even be a playoff contending team, yes. But that starts in today's modern NFL with drafting a true number one ride receiver. And I know, I know, the Patriots, they haven't had a true number one guy since Randy Moss was there. And they basically, you know, they had good receivers. They had Gronk at tight end. Edelman, Welker was there. And then, you know, they, they brought in Danny Amendola and Brandon Mitchell was good for a season. And they, they made it work, right? But in today's NFL, you need a guy who defenses are going to look at and say, we need to do something about that guy. We need to double team this guy because otherwise he's going to exploit us every chance he gets. And that's Marvin Harrison Jr., who could potentially be the best wide receiver we've seen come out of the draft in a generation. Now, after Jamar Chase's rookie season, where he put up those incredible numbers, prevented all-star Pro Bowl quarterback Mac Jones from winning Rookie of the Year, who finished second. Well, I think Marvin Harrison Jr. might be even better than that. You get that wide receiver at third overall, and suddenly you don't have to worry about it again, right? You don't. And then you can probably bring back Hendrick Bourne for cheap, and you can maybe franchise tag Hunter Henry, get him back. Tight ends are cheap because there's like three good, solid tight ends in the NFL, and Hunter Henry is kind of on that edge between being good and great, I guess. He's maybe in the top 10, top 5, I don't know. And you're, you're, you're pretty good there, because you also have Demario Douglas, who is the, the new slot receiver of the future. He's the Jacoby Myers, Julian Edelman, Wes Welker, Troy Brown type. He looks good. He just should put on some muscle this offseason. Make sure he's a little bit more durable. Hold on to the football. Hopefully Gerard Mayo doesn't throw him in the doghouse when he makes a mistake like Belichick did. But that's a good receiving core, right? Hunter Henry at tight end. Maybe you draft a tight end later in the, in the late rounds of the draft. Marvin Harrison Jr., Demario Douglas, Kendrick Bourne, and of course, the X Factor of all, Tyquan Thornton. Yep. He is the guy who's going to be the difference maker. No, obviously, I'm kidding about that. Taekwon, not going to be the guy. Um, although, you just have him run deep, and maybe he'll, he'll get a couple catches. But I think if that is the philosophy for the Patriots, then you approach free agency really attacking that offensive line, right? So the number one priority needs to be re-signing Michael Owenu. I think they will. Whether he plays right tackle or right guard really depends on some of the other pieces that you're going to put around him, but I think you can get Michael Owenu for somewhere between 14 and 18 million. Yes, that's expensive, but you have a sure thing, right tackle, or if your right tackle position is filled, you have 
probably the best right guard that you can possibly put out there. And then you address left tackle in one of two ways. Maybe you go after a Tyron Smith from the Dallas Cowboys. He's probably only going to sign a contract for a year or two because he's getting up there in age. Um, but you throw a lot of money at him, and he's not going to be as expensive. I think you can get him for probably 8 to $10 million. But, hey, you, wanna, you want him to go north. You want him to play in the winters in Foxborough. Maybe you have to dedicate $12 million. But, hey, you cut J.C. Jackson. Maybe you're willing to let go of, you know, an Adrian Phillips or, or one of these defensive players. Suddenly you're looking at somewhere between 85 to $100 million in cap space. You're going to have some money to throw around. And you, you should use that money to really attack that offensive line and bring back the guys that you know work in that Patriots offense. Because you let them go, then you're building even more from scratch, right? So I say you bring back Owenu, go after Tyron Smith. If you can't get him, ah, maybe you go with Trent Brown again. But I think Trent Brown, under a Gerard Mayo regime with a uh, new offensive line coach, didn't work out with Adrian Clem last season. I think maybe, just maybe, I don't like it. I'm not excited about the idea, but maybe he would be the guy you put at left tackle for another couple seasons. And, you know, he's going to demand some money, but he's not going to get a lot anywhere else because when he left New England the first time, he didn't do a damn thing. And he had a bad year last season, so maybe you can get him somewhere in that $10 million range potentially. But the one thing I haven't addressed is the quarterback position, right? So, uh, look, I'm, I'm still somewhat bullish on Mac Jones. It's easy to be bullish when you've hit rock bottom. Now, does that mean I think he should be the starting quarterback? No, but I think there is value to bringing him back as someone that can mentor the next young quarterback in training camp because the issue with Mac Jones is not, is he making the correct reads? Does he understand the playbook? Does he work hard enough? Does he show up early? Does he stay late? He does all those things. He goes through the progression. He makes the correct throws. It just takes a half hour to get there. But for a young quarterback to be able to see someone that's been in the league now for what will be four seasons, who is able to thrive at training camp when he's not taking hits, when he's wearing the red jersey, I think that's going to be very valuable. And look, Max Mac, when it comes to training camp, is pretty good, right? Uh, he's not going to be taking hits. So he's going to be able to lead by example there to the next young quarterback. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think you should bring in a veteran guy, right? I think there's two obvious choices. One or the other works because uh, they both worked with Alex Van Pelt, the new offensive coordinator. And that is either Jacoby Brissett, who we've seen in New England before, um, Kind of a borderline starter, backup, uh, B-minus quarterback, but more than competent. Um, certainly going to have the arm strength and do what you ask him to do. And then there's Joe Flacco. I think a Joe Flacco-led offense, he would probably win that job pretty easily. Um, certainly if he's competing just with Mac Jones and or Bailey Zappi. But we saw what Flacco did with Alex Van Pelt last season. Uh, I, I, I In Cleveland, really had a resurgence. Uh, and I, I, I think if you bring him back, as a veteran presence, maybe he's the bridge guy for a year or two. That would that would work really well, and he certainly knows how to run those wide zone, bootlegs, all those new things that we're going to see in the Patriots offense that we haven't seen before. Yeah, maybe Matt Patricia tried him a little, but it didn't really work out. But I think you're going to have to draft a quarterback probably in the second round if you do not spend the third overall pick on either a Drake May or Jaden Daniels. Now, if you like Drake May or Jaden Daniels and you think, all right, this guy has the next potential, has the potential to be the next superstar, to be up there with Patrick Mahomes and Joe Burrow and Matthew Stafford and Josh Allen and some of these guys, if you're gonna if you think he has a shot being like a Justin Herbert and and being a top five NFL quarterback, well, hey, that's how you get back to the Super Bowl, right? The Chiefs won the Super Bowl because they had Patrick Mahomes. And Patriots won all those Super Bowls in part because they had Tom Brady. If you really think one of those guys is the next superstar, then you draft him. But call me skeptical. I'm not sure they are. There's certainly issues. Drake May playing the ACC. I really like all the tools that he has. Um, he's got a lot of size to him. But, you know, we've seen North Carolina quarterbacks before. I don't think he's Mitch Trubisky like a lot of people think he is. But... 
there is a real boom bust potential there. And same thing with Jaden Daniels. I mean, yeah, we see the comparison to Lamar Jackson. He's bigger than Lamar Jackson, which is nice, but he's also very skinny and he seems to bail on plays a little bit early. And my issue with uh, Jaden Daniels is he's going to run into a 300 pound linebacker and tear his ACL in week one. And then you're back starting with Mac Jones again. So I think it's wise to get that number one receiver that maybe once in a generation receiver that is Marvin Harrison Jr. And then you target one of the second tier quarterbacks early in the second round. Now, is Bo Nix or Michael Penix Jr. going to be on the board? Probably not. A lot of people think they're middle to late first round quarterbacks. Um, certainly, if you're going to bring in a guy like Penix since he's a lefty, then you have to bring back Michael Owenu because then the right tackle position becomes his blindside tackle, and that's very important. But I don't think either of those guys are going to be available. Maybe you trade up and you move back into the late first round if you think you can get one of those guys and you're impressed with them. But someone who's really growing on me, and it's not because he won the national championship, and I understand the concerns. Yes, he hands the ball off 70% of the time at Michigan. But I really, really like J.J. McCarthy. All right, he's tall. Tall enough, he's six foot three. Yeah, maybe a little skinnier than you want, but he can put on some muscle, right? And you don't need him to start right away. And this is the kind of guy that I'm seeing a lot of Brady-esque comparisons to, right? Coming out of Michigan, kind of underrated, I think. You know, won a national championship. Brady didn't, but we saw what he did. Uh, was it in the Orange Bowl or the Rose Bowl? Um, kind of underrated. Can make all the correct throws. Certainly has a stronger arm than Brady did coming into the league. And what I really like about McCarthy is his ability to, to use his feet, to scramble, to get out of the pocket, to extend plays. He's got some speed, too. I mean, he's not Jaden Daniels, but uh, I think he's probably faster than Drake May. He may be the second fastest quarterback in the draft, and he's not dependent on his legs. Now, there are some issues. Obviously, he, he did hand the ball off a lot, which makes it easier when you throw the football. Um, but this is an offense with the Alex Van Pelt wide zone scheme where you are going to have to establish the run early in order to run play actions, bootlegs, do all those sorts of things that we see modern offenses do. And J.J. McCarthy really is prepared for that. We saw Brock Purdy. Brock, the Niners didn't lose the Super Bowl because of Brock Purdy, right? Uh, he's really great. He, you know, he's not the most athletic guy, but he can use his legs when he needs to. Great at running those bootlegs. I see J.J. McCarthy as a more athletic version of that with higher arm strength. And uh, he's pretty accurate for the most part. Now, I think one of the issues that does concern me, and this is something we've seen with Mac Jones, more with Mac because he has a noodle arm, but with J.J., it's throwing to the sideline, particularly the right side. He is prone to interceptions there, potential pick sixes, maybe throwing the ball a little bit too late. Um, so that it's important that he learns how to go through the progressions, make timely reads, hit the number one guy or the number two if the number one's not open, number three if number two's not open, is able to do that and process it quickly, and that's going to take some time. And that's why I think you keep Mac Jones, who can do all those things, just can't throw the football hard, uh, and you bring in a veteran guy who will probably compete and win that starting job, whether that is Jacoby Brissett or Joe Flacco. Um, I think there are a lot of options there. Maybe you do get rid of Mac. There's a lot of rumors that the Patriots do want to trade him, but you're not going to get a lot back. Hell, I think you could probably get more back for Bailey Zappi because somebody's going to want him as a backup for like a sixth or seventh round pick. Mac, I don't think you're getting better than a seventh round pick. So I, I say you keep Mac just as someone who can lead by example, even if you think Bailey Zappi is better than Mac at this point. Bailey Zappi is not going to be the star of the future. So. I think that would be a pretty good quarterback room. You have Mac Jones coming back, final year of his contract, something to prove, is able to lead by example in training camp, understand the playbook, mentor that young quarterback, even if he doesn't really want to, he's going to have to, uh, bring in a veteran like Joe Flacco or Jacoby Brissett, and then draft J.J. McCarthy, who is someone that I think you could really develop and could take over that starting job by year two maybe even earlier if he has a great training camp. And look, he looks cool, man. He looks good out there, right? He's got the eye paint, you know. We've seen that with Tom Brady. It's a little more smeared. 
I think he's got this grit to him, that this toughness that we don't really have with Mac Jones, that is very Brady-esque. I don't know. I think really highly of the guy. Let me know what you think in the comments. Is this a good idea for the Patriots? That The strategy I outlined, draft Marvin Harrison Jr., bring in a veteran, keep Mac, draft J.J. McCarthy, and then spend some money on the tackle positions this offseason, bring back the receivers that work, Hunter Henry, Kendrick Bourne, and then see what happens. Look, it, it's going to probably be a lengthy rebuild, but you can make this a one- to two-year rebuild instead of a four-year rebuild, which is really what it takes if you're starting from scratch. And you're not going to have that great defense, those defensive players who mostly are only under contract for another year for very long. So, yeah, maybe you can bring them back a year from now, but there is a tight window in keeping that elite defense under Gerard Mayo. And really, they're going to have to focus their resources on rebuilding that offense this offseason. So, you're watching on YouTube. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more Patriots coverage. And if you listen on Apple Podcasts, be sure to subscribe there as well. And let me know what you think in the comments, or if you have a better idea, if you think it should be Drake May or Jaden Daniels, or maybe you spend some draft capital and go get the best quarterback, Caleb Williams. I don't know. Throw out some ideas. You like Penix. You like Bo Nix. Maybe you're a Spencer Rattler guy. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear from you.